now let's look into docker to start with let's look at the docker architecture first so docker is a classical client server architecture it has a docker runtime which is the docker container runtime also there's a docker daemon which is where the actually all containers are managed run and everything this is also called as docker host docker host is controlled and connected by a docker cli which is nothing but docker client and in a classical way all the artifacts or packages which we call images in docker world are stored in a registry registry is nothing like uh, is quite similar to your npm registry or maven repository and all right all the artifacts are stored here they are downloaded to host machine and run it here so let's say if i look at the first part where you have to build an image you first talk to the daemon and then you create a an image and push it to the docker hub which is a central repository now if you want to run uh, the image first you have to pull an image so from the docker client you execute a command to docker daemon to pull the image it goes to the central repository downloads the image and saves it on the local host machine and to run it you have to again issue a command run which actually runs the image which is already present on the host machine and starts the container so in a way images are one time and containers you can spin up n number of containers from one image if you look at the analogy of class and objects objects are instance of classes in a similar way containers are instance of images provided in the docker world so that's how the docker architecture works with client server and registry as a central repository so all of this put together so you have to build an image pull image and run the image that's how it works now let's let's look at how this docker is set up on the local machine to install docker for desktop you go to the website and install docker for mac or docker for windows generally docker runs on the linux system only so while running the docker for desktop they use internally hyperkit which is which provides the virtualization layer or hypervisor layer on top of the mac machine in windows there is some effort for running in natively however windows for desktop still runs on linux only so let's look at docker now in detail on the command line so if i go ahead when i install docker it installs client as well as docker daemon on my mac os so if i do docker version you can notice that i have a docker client installed which is of specific version running on mac os however i am not able to connect to any daemon because i don't have daemon running so docker client connects to docker daemon on a simple tcp socket so first you have to check if it is running so let me start my docker my machine so i started my docker if you see i run docker version and if you notice that it is connected to the docker daemon which is running on my machine however if you notice that it is running on linux only so it is via hyperkit if you go to my activity monitor you can see that there is a hyperkit process running which is where actually a linux running right now let's say i have docker version installed which is my latest version there now first step that i want to do is like 
I want to see what are the images that I have on my machine. So I run command docker images. So I can do docker help to get all the list of commands that I can do. There are many. We'll look into this session one by one, a few of them. So docker images is the first command to know if I have any images on my machine. I don't have any images. And to know if there is any containers running, I can do docker ps, which is like, is there any docker containers running? I don't have any container running. So let me do the first step to pull the image from the central Docker Hub registry. So default registry is, is used as hub.docker.com. This is where all the images are hosted and by default, Docker connects to this registry. So if I go ahead and search here, hello world, I should be able to find the hello world image. This is the smallest and simplest image that is provided by Docker. So if I just do Docker pull hello world, it downloads the image and stores it on my machine. You'll see that it is available on my machine immediately. Now if I go ahead and run the command Docker images, it will show me the image which is hello world downloaded just now. Now, if I go ahead and run Docker PS, no containers are running, which means I downloaded the image, but I have not run the uh, or created the container out of the image. So if I to do that, I have to do Docker run and the image name. That's the another command on Docker. Now this image is very tiny. It's very small. If you look at it, it's just 1.84 KB. What it does is like, it just prints the uh, certain welcome messages on the screen, that's all. And that's how the simple, smallest image works. It uses internally a kernel of the host machine, which is nothing but uh, Linux running on the HyperKit right now on my machine, right? But okay, now if I go ahead and run Docker PS, I still don't, don't see anything. But if I do PS minus A, tells me that yes, it has run one container, which is from image hello world, created 37 seconds ago, but accelerated immediately, right? So that's how the uh, images were, uh, image was uh, executed. However, okay, if I want another image, uh, which is a little bit long running, then I need to use the uh, proper image, right? So if I say Docker run Nginx, which is my long running image, okay? So before that, let me just put a, another screen so that I can watch Docker PS command here. So when I do Docker run Nginx, you will notice that the Nginx server starts and you will see the image there. But first, since I did not add an Nginx image on my machine, it is downloading the, pulling the image from the Docker Hub. And you'll notice that it is downloading image in parts. I'll explain you what these parts and everything in the later session. So if you notice now, image is downloaded and the container has started. And if you notice below in the lower part, you'll see the container running with the image name Nginx and uh, 18 seconds ago. Now this has this occupied my terminal uh, window. So if I exit this, it also exits the image. Uh, sorry, it exits the container. So now if I have to go ahead and run the uh, Nginx container for you know detach mode, there is an option for running it in option minus D. So as soon as you enter minus D, you will see that the image is running and uh, I got the container ID printed on the screen. So now I have my image running, uh, which is long running. And uh, I can see that uh, it is there. To access logs of the image, I can do container logs, docker logs, and then the container ID, which is here. 
However, there is no log because I have not hit any uh, endpoint yet for the Nginx. So if I want to hit the any of the endpoint, I have to connect to the port, right? So if I try to connect to the port, curl, but which port to connect, where to connect, right? I cannot connect to localhost. If I try to connect to localhost, also I am not getting anything, right? So the next step is that from this Nginx image, I have to redirect my Docker port to my local machine port, right? So I say Docker, I'll first stop the current running container. Now, uh, the container is gone. Now I run it again, but I run it with the uh, port forwarding. So I say run minus P. I want to forward 8080 port. Uh, I want to give the name to my uh, Nginx uh, container so that I can refer it with the name rather than the container ID and in the detached mode, right? So I have this running now. If you notice below, there is a container running and the name of the container that I specified is coming up here. If you don't specify the name, there is a random name created and it's difficult to follow that. So if I go ahead and now do Docker logs for my web, I can see there is no log yet, right? Now if I do curl localhost colon 80, then I can see the response. Right now, if I go ahead and see logs, which is another command, so I say docker logs my web, I can see that there was a one hit to my Nginx server. So that's how I can have my long running process as well. Now, if I want to go inside a Docker container, I can have another option in my Docker, docker exec minus interactive and then container name which is my web followed by shell so i'm going inside my container so right now i'm inside if i do ls i can see here all my directories where i'm pwd i can see my uh, current directory which is root right so i'm inside this and i can do whatever i want on the machine, right? It's nothing but a Linux uh, machine there. So if I exit now, and if I do Docker images, you'll notice that I have two images. One is Nginx and one is Hello World. I have Nginx container running, right? Now, if I want to spin up more Nginx containers, I can do that easily by just doing Docker run minus D Nginx. If I don't specify the name, it will pick up a random name. If you see now, the new container started here. This is the one. I can run one more. I can run as many containers as I want to run from the same Nginx image. However, to just showcase you that how they are different at runtime, right? So I'll go uh, and create another one with uh, forwarding port forwarding to 81, which is my web 2. So I have another one now, so my web and my web 2 running as containers. If I go and try to hit the URL localhost, I'll see Nginx running here. If I hit a URL here on 81 port, I see Nginx running here, right? Now, if I go inside my web and try to create one HTML file. So let's go inside a directory where we have our Nginx files are hosted. I have two files here. I'll create another one. This is tonight. Parik, so it to HTML test.html. We can put some H1 tech here. Fine. 
So I have now another file test.html which is running in my web which is actually on port 80 mapped on port 80 on my local machine. So if I go here, if I try to hit test.html, I can see some correct. But when I go here and try to run test.html, I don't have that file. So remember that each container is different, just that it has picked up the base image. Now, uh, to understand more about containers, let's understand the life cycle of container, right? So when container are in a stop mode, let's say a stop container, we do docker ps minus a. I have a container which is not in a running state, but it is created and ready to run at any point of time. So I can just start again by just saying docker start and either container name or container ID and it will pick up and start again. And when you stop and start, the state is maintained. Also, one more uh, important part about container lifecycle is to understand that which process governs the lifecycle of a container. To look at that, I'll just do one small, I'll, I'll run another uh, image, which is BusyBox, and I'll directly jump into the shell of the BusyBox. So since the BusyBox image is not available on my local machine, it is downloading from the Docker Hub registry. I have my BusyBox downloaded now, ready. If you see at the bottom, you'll see that the BusyBox is running. The command that started the BusyBox is sh, right? And this is the process, right? Now, if I look at ps, you'll notice that the process ID one is attached to the command sh, which started the Docker container. Exactly similar to that, you see nginx command starting the uh, Docker container. So in case if I exit this shell prompt, which is here as process ID one, the container is going to die. So if I exit from here, if you notice container is gone, right? So uh, remember that process ID one is the life cycle for container. If process ID one gets killed for any reason, then the container dies. That's the life cycle of the container. So container is created, then started in a running state, can have stop. Now I have so many stopped containers, right? If I look at PS minus A, I have a container which is in a stop state is this busy box. However, I can start at any point of time, but if I want to remove container completely, I have to use the command docker rm followed by container ID or container name and I'm getting it. However, remember that the images are there. So images and the containers are different. Containers are spin up from an image. Now I have a simple exercise for you, which you can try out is Install Docker desktop on your machine. Run Nginx container with port, port forwarding. And as I showed you uh, that uh, there is a directory from which uh, Nginx serves the content, right? What you could do is like, you could try to volume mount the directory from your host machine to your container. Similar to what we do port forwarding, the volumes are also possible to mount in the Docker containers. Please go ahead and explore. I've given a link. You can just search for Docker container volume mount and you will find lots of resources.